three, two, one. Hello everybody, Tall and the Snakes here, and welcome back to Cradle. Where we left off next, last time, was in the middle of this game. I unfortunately failed. He's still being a dick. Hopefully he stays wherever he will. I seem to be doing better, better than last time. Okay, you come down here. Over there. He yeah, survived. Stop. There we go. Oh, I made it lucky. There's the yellow. I know what I I got what it has to take. 
<clears throat> to do this. I just have to do it. At least he dislodged all the block. That one I was... Should be able to build myself a stairwell. If that makes it, I'm done. So now I got myself a fuel cell. I still wonder what these minigames have to do with therapy. Come on, loading screen. There we are. Let's see new task. Install Ida's new battery. That should be simple enough. I found out what special quality those kids had. They had exceptionally developed visual perception. Visual and aesthetic. For them, the shape, color, and the like of surrounding objects was of critical importance. Some things were beautiful in their eyes, others the definition of ugly. And here's the kicker. They were always in consensus. But it was that very ability that ultimately became their blight. The particulars, however, I still do not know. Interesting. I would have hated to have been one of those kids. something. What? You mentioned original's right. What is that? That's a right to bear identity. When a new M body is activated during a transfer, it is also bestowed original's right, thus acquiring an identity. At that very moment, the former body loses this right and is destroyed. Destroyed? Yeah. Why? I'm not sure. Perhaps to ensure the two never communicate. Why? What would happen if they communicate? I can't be sure. That's a rare occurrence. I believe the consequences are rather strange. They... 
I don't know how to explain it. Got it. Did you bring the battery? Here it is. Let's replace it. Go ahead. But you'll need to switch me off first. All right. Here come the shakes again. Well, no way around that. Yep. Shut me down. See you in a minute. Yeah. Let's reference the poster. What? It goes in the chest. Okay. Let's move the hair to the future. in one day. I'm breaking records. Go. Congratulations. <laughs> Thanks. Well, did you find out anything? Yes. Did you find your number? My number? Oh, no, not yet. But I did learn what the children were treated for. Remember I told you that the shape of objects was important to them? I do. Well, their illness was called morphophobia, fear of a shape, or to be more precise, an aversion to it. What kind of shape? The human body. They couldn't stand the sight of a human body. That was their disease. What do you mean that they couldn't stand it? They would literally get sick, vomiting at the sight of any person. Their teachers, doctors, passers-by, their own parents. Even seeing each other in the mirror. What did they dislike so much about the human body? We never did find the answer. The children weren't able to articulate their feelings. First of all, they were really young. And secondly, they were unable to communicate at all with anyone. Any attempt at communication caused suffering and psychogenic vomiting. Jeez. What an unusual disease. Yes. Which is why the treatment was likewise unusual. Now I know the purpose behind those strange activities. Playing with cubes, collecting parts, and so on. So why were they assembling an in-body on stage? To cultivate in the children a positive association with the sight of a human body. They were using those bits to independently assemble a fairy tale character. A positive character. And thanks to their efforts, a young woman would take the stage. The defender of beauty, protecting a blossoming garden from a wicked witch. The witch symbolized ugliness? Evidently. Beauty would triumph over ugliness, and the children rejoiced at their involvement in bringing about a happy end. Bit by bit, their repulsion toward the human body was thus dislodged from their psyches, replaced by a new mindset which filled the human body with beauty and goodness. Wow. But why did they need to go through a transfer? The transfer anchored this mindset. All the emotional experience obtained at the Gerbera Garden would anchor only in a new body. Otherwise, the therapy had no effect. I see. And the cubes? What was their purpose? The cubes have an extremely simple shape. Playing in the pavilions blunted the kids' excessive sensitivity. Their psyches were being simplified so as to start sewing in them trivial categories. Good and evil, beauty and ugliness. Because their perception developed in an anomalous manner, the kids saw the world of shapes very differently, in a way that grown-ups could never understand. And there was no other way to save their lives other than to... make them simpler. I'm still having trouble understanding. Wow. Hold on. Meyer. Hedabish, my name is Ida Meyer. You remembered? I found a journal. It contains my data. Here. Ida Meyer, age 26, city of Geneva. My personal number. And a date. 
August 15th, 2058. What year is it, by the way? 76. Whoa. So, I'm a psychologist from Geneva, and I've been lying in Mongolian soil for 18 years. In a candy box. And not in soil, but in sand. Very well, in sand. And now I'm in a flower vase, trying to verify my number. Only... Damn it. What? It's not working. The network interface, I can't get online. I guess the vase doesn't integrate with the web. Anibish, there's another network terminal underneath the TV. It's functional only without power. If you can power it up, I'll be able to get online. I'll try. Let's see All how right, the wiring let's do goes. this. Okay, under the... The alternate deletes. If that didn't work. There's another wire going over here. Around here. Hopefully that's nothing, but... Go outside, see what we got out here. Something must have been attached like a slip panel. Okay, let's put the solar panel right there. Solar panel. Got me a network dish. Well, satellite dish, but. Let's head up to the dish, see what I can do here. Doesn't look like I can do anything there. Well, looks like I got. Nope, I don't have power yet. On button is jammed, I can't press it. Batteries in the box under the awning. Oh. I just need to find me some batteries, wherever they may be. Oh, got me a battery.
Just hooking an object with that. There's got to be at least one battery in here. Oh, it's on the top of a stinking shelf. One more battery. That's up. Could there be another battery in here? Uh, that didn't really help me, but... Rider and an M-Body. Somewhere. There's gotta be another body, another battery somewhere near here. Probably, it's probably something right in front of me. this third battery can I put you in? nope well, there it is hiding on me there we go hey Josh, use the remote Switch on the terminal. Glasses. Pills. How hard can I find a remote? Did you power up the terminal? Not yet. Come on. Fall somewhere under the table or the bed. Didn't help me too much. So, under the table. Unless you. Unless I'm not that bad. I don't see anything under there.
Think bait now from nineteen sixty one. A spark coming from a pole up the hill. Well, I see it. The reason is both simple and evident. Simultaneous existence of two copies of the same person gives rise to problems we are not prepared to tackle, as clearly demonstrated by the sorrowful experience of the recent past. For now, strict prohibition on duplication and forced deactivation of existing duplicates remain the only solution to the situation. Deactivated neurocopies are retired into secure storage facilities for likely reactivation in the future, when a legitimate solution oh, is found. Geez. This is one of the cases when... Ida, our terminal burned down. I know, but I managed to check the number in time. You did? So what's the news? Are you going home? The news is bad. I no longer have originals right. There's nowhere for me to go. Why? I was restored. Three years ago, Ida Meyer was confirmed dead and restored from a reserve neurocopy. She currently lives somewhere in Geneva. We don't seem to have much luck. How did she die? It says here, died in a disparatoxin emission in 2058. This means you are now a duplicate? Correct. My very existence is illegal. Well, don't fret. We'll improvise. Improvise? Sure. We'll find you a normal body with legs. With legs? And then what? Then? Then we'll live our lives. Selling flowers. Anibish, listen. When my battery runs out, I want you to put my flowers into secure warranty. I mean, into a glass cell, yes? That is a secure evacuation. I understand. What? What I mean is, please put my neurochip in a cell which... Anibish, into a camera of tights or a camera of dreams. What's with your voice? I don't know. A camera of tides? What are you talking about? I'm malfunctioning somehow. My thoughts are out of order. But that's good. I think it's over. You need repairs. I don't need anything, Edvish. I'll be put to sleep soon. Disconnected. For a long while, I bet. Uh, so you've decided? Yes, that is my decision. Yeah. So you wake up and go right back to sleep. Got it. Or like, wake up, get totally confused, then go back to sleep. What are you confused about? The explosion, for one thing. I haven't a clue how I'm connected to it. You got caught in an emission. That's just bad luck. No, Enibish, it's not that simple. I found another mention of my name, here, in the database, in the search history. Somebody was searching for information about me. So what? What's so strange about that? The fact that it was the only query for my name in the entire search history, made 20 minutes before the explosion. Who made the query? A man named Mark. Mark Darren. He's listed as transfer operator. The explosion happened on his shift. There's even a recording of it. And also... How curious. This is getting deep. What? Going by the recording, there was an equipment breakdown not long before the explosion. At around the same time the query was made. Yes, I want to know what happened there. What kind of a recording is it? <coughs> a report. It was saved automatically. It mentions some kind of a malfunction that because it wasn't corrected in time, forced a modification in the transfer procedure. And no, I don't know the nature of the modification. I haven't yet figured it out. Why do you even care? Is that really important now? It yeah. is to me, because aside from these fragments of the past, 
I have more fragments of the past than I- Ida. Hey. It happened again. I'm getting worse. I'll repeat. You need repairs. You need to know the cause of the problem before you can correct it, which I do not. Could it be those processing errors you've mentioned? Which errors? You know, the ones that accumulate over time. Impossible. I've just rebooted myself. They don't accumulate so quickly. Something else is happening here. Your voice is changing. If only it were just the voice. I'm at a loss. The reasons could be many. Could be my synchronizer is on the fritz. I've heard of cases when the neurochip malfunctioned due to a deteriorating link with the DNA. Either that or... My neurocopy is failing. But if that's the case... What then? Nothing. Let's just hope it's the synchronizer. Let's. Then we'll replace it with a new one. Sure. There's a new one here in the small. Distance what? close. Give me the pavilion number. I'll go and get it. Is... In six rooms soft. Got it. And, um, don't go crazy just yet. Try. Well, that's gonna have to wait Try. for next time. Yes. So, enjoy yourselves. Bye!